Hi everyone, I'm Theo Haas and welcome to the forest of Western Washington. I'm hanging out on the Olympic Peninsula with some of the biggest trees in the world. But today, we have a bit of a forest mystery on our hand. Behind me here is a group of trees that is growing in almost a perfectly straight line and it has me doing a double take. See, naturally, most plants don't really grow in straight lines. That's something we humans do when we plant them to keep them nice and organized. But this forest out here grew up naturally. Well, today, we're gonna solve the mystery of these trees in a line by looking at a tree called the Western Hemlock. It's a Northwestern giant that's well adapted to life in these shady forests. And we're also going to answer the existential question, where does a tree go when it dies? First things first, we gotta get this out of the way. You might be thinking, hemlock, isn't that super poisonous? But the poisonous hemlock you're thinking of is a completely different plant from the western hemlock. It's not even actually a tree. If you're still nervous, let's get out there and learn a little bit about what the western hemlock looks like so you can feel safe saying hello to it out in the wild. I'm out here now with my friend, the Western Hemlock Tree, with more friend Western Hemlocks behind me here. The first thing you need to know for IDing this tree is that it's got a very droopy appearance. The top branch of the Western Hemlock, which we call a leader, is often flopped over to the side, and the lower branches are really hanging down in a droopy look, kind of like wet towels. It almost looks like somebody took a bucket of water and threw it over the top of the hemlock. In a funny way, that kind of does happen. These trees live in a place of the Pacific Northwest that is so wet that it's called a temperate rainforest. And because of all that rain, they also live in usually very forested areas with a lot of other trees to compete with and a very dark understory. And that has to do with the next ID feature that we're gonna check out now. Here, we take a close up look at the needle-like leaves of the Western Hemlock. These leaves are arranged in a pattern. They alternate between long needle, short needle, long needle, short needle. And what this arrangement does for the western hemlock is it allows them to really efficiently pack in as many leaves as possible into a pretty small space. And that's important because it allows them to capture the uber important resource of sunlight even down here in the dark understory. That really dense foliage also helps them to shade out other plants beneath them that might grow up to be competition someday. We have one more ID feature to look at, and this one's gonna connect us directly back to our story of trees and lines and where dead trees go when they die. And now on to the last identification feature of a Western hemlock, the cones. Cones are really important because they're what a conifer uses to reproduce with. Now, on a Western hemlock, cones are pretty small, a little bigger than a marble, and they're absolutely prolific, just covering the tree. Each one of these cones can have 30 to 40 seeds inside of it, and that means that in a mature hemlock forest, you can have up to 8 million hemlock seeds per acre per year. It's a truckload of seeds. Now, what this tells us is that a lot of hemlock seedlings are actually doomed to die before they can make it to maturity, and how do we know this? Well, because there aren't 8 million hemlock trees on every acre of land, that would be impossible. But what does this have to do with where dead trees go when they die? Well. Now that we know how to ID this tree in the wild, we're gonna get back to that and answer the question of why do Western hemlocks love dead logs? This story begins with a seed. Let's say that you are a tiny little hemlock seed and you've just dropped out of your cone to go out and start your life becoming a wonderful giant tree. As we just learned, your chances are really grim. But for the sake of this story, let's say that you're a lucky one. When you fall out of your cone, you drop down and you land on one of the best possible places for a young hemlock tree to start growing, on the decomposing corpse of a dead relative. Here's why. As I mentioned before, the forests of the Pacific Northwest, especially the western part, are wet places. And with all that water, what that means is that the nutrients that are here in the soil are constantly being leached out and washed away downstream. And that can be especially a big problem with so much plant life around competing for the nutrients that are left. And that's not all. Even though it rains for most of the year here, there can be patches in the summer where it's a bit drier. And when that happens with this many trees sucking water out of the soil, they dry up very fast. The problem with that is that 
Trees need water to survive. They also need nutrients to survive. And by nutrients here, I'm talking about things like phosphorus and nitrogen, the kind of things you might find in garden fertilizer. Enter the dead wood here. It's the moist fertilizing sensation that's sweeping the nation, or at least this part of it. You see, this dead wood back here is chock full of those same nutrients like phosphorus and nitrogen. Of course it is. It was once a living organism that literally collected those nutrients for a living. It makes sense that they're stored up in there. And in addition to that, because this log is decomposing and being eaten by fungi and insects, it's really porous. And that means that it's super good at storing water, kind of like a big sponge. It soaks up water throughout the winter, and in the summertime, it retains that moisture. For a baby hemlock tree, this literally looks like paradise. So, the question of where do trees go when they die? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Trees go to heaven. I mean, they spend their whole lives doing no evil, just giving and giving, and come on, how would heaven be without trees in it? Wait, am I dead? Oh no, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I still have so much to live for. I mean, this is beautiful, but send me back. So what happens to a tree when it dies? Well, that should be obvious. It becomes a home for a little baby hemlock tree. Actually, deadwood in the temperate rainforest becomes homes for an enormous amount of life here. These trees are so nurturing that they become known as nurse logs. And this nurse log behind me here is supporting dozens of species of mosses, lichens, fungi, insects, plants, and probably supports hundreds more that we can't even see. In fact, because these nurse logs provide the water and nutrients for the next generation of trees, like the western hemlock here, they're literally the reason that we have a forest like this in the first place. Who would have thought that a piece of dead wood could be so important to the whole ecosystem? So, back to the mystery of trees in a straight line in the ancient forest here. Have you figured it out? If you guessed aliens, you're wrong. But if you guessed that it has something to do with nurse logs, you got it. We know that nurse logs have a higher nutrient and water content than the surrounding soil here. And we know that hemlocks like to start out their life on those logs, which lie down on the ground in a straight line. And so that's how the trees grow up on them. We end up with these lines of trees. It's a really beautiful story because even after the logs have rotted away, these trees in a straight line tell us the story of the forest cycling its nutrients. All right, there's a final part of this story that we need to look into. How do humans fit into this? Well, for thousands of years, indigenous peoples of this region have been a part of this landscape and have managed it in a way that have allowed these natural cycles to carry out fairly unhindered. However, in the last several hundred years, Euro-American settlers have moved in and really started to disrupt some of these flows of nutrients here in the Pacific Northwest Forest. I've moved on and I'm now standing beside a clear-cut logging operation just a few miles from the old growth forest where the rest of this video was filmed. The difference is pretty obvious. There's no real natural disturbance that's quite as destructive as clear-cut logging. Looking around me here, the trees have been knocked down for dozens of acres in just about every direction. What does this mean for trees that are trying to grow here? Well, it means that the young trees behind me that were planted in by people are gonna have to face things like erosion, exposure to the elements, and also drying out of the soil on warmer days with all the sun coming down, sucking up all that water. It makes a big difference for the western hemlock because of another feature of most clear cuts. This is, of course, a little video about nurse logs, but if we look at our clear cut behind me here, what you might notice is that there aren't really any nurse logs. Of course there's not. That wood was cut down with the intention of bringing it away. And oftentimes what's left over is usually put into a pile and burned, which means no nurse log habitat. Now, don't get me wrong. We need timber operations as a species to survive. Human beings are so dependent on wood, but it is worth considering that there are better ways of harvesting the wood that allow for ecosystem processes and nutrient cycling to continue. 
And on a personal level, we can also consider how we consume wood. There's a lot of waste that goes on in modern society today. For example, the average size of houses in the United States, most of which are made of wood, have doubled since the last century, even as the family size has shrunk. When we consider things like this, we can make sure that forests are better managed and that we're not extracting too many resources so that trees like the western hemlock, which can grow in these clear cuts but aren't as happy with it, still have those old, mature, and diverse forests where they can reach their full potential. The next time you're out in the forest, take a look around and see if you can spot a western hemlock or a nurse log. And remember how these two interact to form the mysterious tree lines of the Olympic Peninsula and how this tree connects you with the rest of the ecosystem. Hi everybody, I hope you enjoyed this last tree video. If you want to learn a lot more about trees, you can keep up with this page by subscribing to it. And if you want to help it grow a little bit more, please consider sharing these videos out to more friends. Thanks.